Okay, so this no right here, I decided not to make a slide on this, but this is called pronoun no, which uh, means that this is a filler word for something that's most likely has been either mentioned in a previous sentence or will be mentioned in the current sentence. In this case, it is referring to the thing at the end of the sentence, this kikai. So in English, we use this pronoun one to fill this place. So the one or the thing. So one or thing acts as a pronoun in this case, a filler word to represent something else. Um, so let's go read the sentence. Teni ireta nova. Teni om samaru okisa no kikai hata. Right. So the thing that what? Ireta, the thing that was in my hand. Basically. Teni osamaru okisa no kikai datta. The thing that was in my hand was a. It was a machine that is of the size that fit my hand. Exactly. Yep. So basically, it's about the same size as his hand would be what you kind of kind of assign it. Fits right inside his hand. So probably not a teeny stone. Probably pretty pretty good size, though it depends on how old he is. And if he was like height. nine, his hand's gonna be quite a bit smaller. Um, height. So yeah, perfect. So yeah, you kind of see how that. Um, sorry, going backwards real quick. You can see how that one is basically just the thing, the one, and this is just describing it before we say what it does. So the thing was blank. So perfect. Um, so this guy right here, I made the decision to not go through all this vocabulary um, because it was just like a lot of vocabulary and not a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> but Hi. this is basically the last sentence you said earlier, but we've added more stuff. So kiken o okasu is to brave danger. It's just a phrase to mean that. So the thing that I that I got, that I braved danger for, was, you know, the machine that's for the size of my hand. And then he describes that machine. So this machine, this machine is four discs. Um, so it's this, there's four of them. So we know there's four discs. They are all made out of ivory. So this is um, elephant bone. And on these ivories are um, gears. So yeah, I, I just thought this would be a lot of vocabulary for not a lot of um use, right? <laughs> you don't know what ivory means? <laughs> What's really funny is I, that in the I, English version, it just says bone. So like for me, when I read the English version, I thought it was like human bones. <laughs> like, I what, see. What, I... <laughs> what do you mean it's elephant bone? <laughs> the bad guy. Ivory. Hi. <laughs> um... Do you know what this guy's pronounced as? Nakami. Perfect. Oh, oop. yep. Do, 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 do. Okay, next word. Can you read it for me? Shochu. Yep, shochu is always, so all the time. Shochu. Shochu. Can you read this for me? Kikai wa shochu. Chika chika. Itaru. Chika chika was flashy, right? It can be. In this case, it's a ticking noise. Chika. Uh I think I probably was supposed to write kachi kachi, and I just got it mixed up in my brain. I can double check. Oh uh, yeah, it's kachi kachi, but it says chika chika. Chika chika. Chika chika. Kachi kachi. Tick tick. <laughs> so so. Hi. So what is this saying? Um. Dyslexia is contagious, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so Kagi, I know uh, the uh, key, key, key kai. Up the machine. The machine. What did it do? It's constantly. It's chōju, constantly ticking. Yep. Yep. Iteru. Perfect. It's constantly ticking. It's saying tick, tick, tick. Um, do you know what the causative form of you is? Iwaseru. Perfect. Okay, so let's go read the sentence from the book. 
こはこれをちょうちゅうカチカチ言わせている。クロウ。This constantly ticking. クロウ caused this to constantly ticking. Exactly. Perfect. Next word is hikui. Do you have to know what hikui means? Hikui is、um, low. Hikui is low, yep. And this can also be used to describe a voice. Hikui.、Um, so your job is to remember how to read this kanji. How do you read it? Hikui. Perfect. Can you read this for me?、Um... Machitsushi wa hikui koe de nani kaita. The magician s a y something with a low voice. Perfect. Can you read this for me? Unaru. Unaru is to growl like a dog. <laughs> What does it say? <laughs> Inu wa unata. The dog growl. Exactly. Perfect.、Uh, can you read this for me? Fukigen. Hi. So, kigen means to be like, to have good humor. So, fukigen is to have bad humor, to be in a bad mood. Fukigen. And this is a、mm. not adjective. So, it's, it's a. Fukigen. Hi. Grumpy voice, basically. Kigen.、Uh, it's strange、uh, that it had the word key for machines in there. I know. Very weird. It's machine、Or、and then hating. <laughs> So it's weird that Kigen is like good mood because it's machine and hating right there. Kirai. Hating? To hate? Yeah, Kirai. To hate. Kirai. Oh, dislike.、Huh. Yeah. So apparently, not hating machines is being in a bad mood. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Kigen. Hi.、Uh, anyway, let's go read the line from the book. Heya no naka de. ねぶりが、あひ、ひ、ひけ、ひけ、ひこえで、ひくい、こえで、うなるように、なにかいうのが、あ、um, ん、きこえた、ふきげんなこえだ、あ、um, ん、the room, Inside the room, nobody with a low voice growl, unaru yoni, as if he was growling. Nani ka iyu no ka, something.、Um, growl, as if he was growling something. Iyu no ga, and that is not audible, cannot be heard. Kikoe de. No, it can be heard. So in、that. this case, it's kind of like I hear. Nevery, in other words, within the room, saying something in a kind of a growl as if he's growling with a low voice. Hi. And how does he describe And,、uh, that voice? Fukigenna koeda. It was not a humorous voice. Yep. Obviously, he's in a bad mood. It's grumpy. It's grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. I guess. It's grumpy voice. Yes, yes. Super grumpy. Well, that's odd.、Um, do you know how this guy's read? So, the demo, um, yoku?、Oh, yoku, yep. Yoku, which is horizontal. How about this guy? Suzuku.、Mm, Suzuku is something.、Awake. Yes, Kizuku,、oh, Kizuku is, Kizuku is, can be used like Kizuita, he woke up. Um, it, it kind of literally it's to be aware. So, the get awareness that's waking up. So, when he Kizuita. Hi. Um, do you remember how this guy's read? Um, Daremo Nai, no one. Close. It's, um, Ha, Ha Nare Nai. So, Ha Nare Ru is to separate. Ha Nare Nai, separate, to not separate. Yep. So, the sentence is, um, the stone gets bigger and I attempt to release it, but it will not separate from me. Um, any guesses how this would be read? 
Uh, yok de, yok de, Good yok guess. de. Yoko de. Yoko de. So yoko de is basically like besides you, besides, next to. Any guesses how this would be read? Hanasu. Hi, hanasu. So what do you think hanasu means? To separate. Yep. To cause separation? To uh, separate yes. something else? It is to separate. What is the top form of kizuku? Mm, Half form. Kizuku. This is kizuite. Kizuita. Yeah, kizuita. Perfect. How would you read this? Kagi ana kara. Mi o me o hanashita. I separate my eyes from the keyhole. Perfect. And let's go read the line from the book. Kagi ana kara me o hanasu to kono heya no yoko de ni mo hitotsu doa ga aru no ni tsu ga kizuita. I separate my eyes from the keyhole and uh, the next to that room, next to the room, there mo hitotsu door. There's another door, uh, that exists. Aru no ni. Yeah. So I realized there's one more door that exists. So in this case, this ni is because kizuku takes ni. That's what you realize. Just so you know. I felt like you knew that, but I just wanted to clarify. That is not even though, I don't know, looks identical. Do you know why there's a no here? We t we say that that which I've noticed is because the aru cannot modify directly the ni, so we have to yep. put a no in there, right? Yep. And we pick no rather than koto because we're talking about a very specific occasion. As in right now, I am realizing there's another door right here. Rather than in general, I realize there are doors. Um, can you read this for me? Okay, so that no was a normalization of that verb aru. Yes, no and ko koto are both kind of not normalizers for I, verbs in order to allow them to be used in certain cases. Um, I, and they in order they for do us to... convey different things, so they're not interchangeable. <laughs> So we turn that whole clause into a noun in order to say that we come to realize that, that thing, basically, that thing, which was existing. It depends on your interpretation of it. Uh, for me, I kind of like the interpretation of this being kind of pronoun now, and this right here is just a big ass um relative clause, because then it kind of right. like fits with koto better, because koto isn't really nanifizer; it's like the word about. And then about is being described with by what about what are we talking about blah 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 so it it depends on how you want to interpret it we're not linguistics so it it's whatever works Hi. better in your brain <laughs> for remembering things but for me it kind of is just a filler word that we're describing with a relative clause makes almost more sense to me than just being a random thing we add to turn it into a noun. Especially since there's only certain occasions when we can use it and it does describe um, some kind of specificness to it. Anyway, what does this say? Kagiri? Yep. Kaza. Kazari. Ah, uh, Kazari. Kazari. Kazari is um, de decorations or to be decorated, basically. Kazari, um, hi. Do you know how this guy's read? Um, yep, chikazuku. Chika, chika, chikazuki. What does that mean, chikazuku? Zuki, zuku was um, zuku. I don't know that verb. Chikai, uh, chikai is close, and chikazuku is the verb form, which means to get close, so to do closeness. So it's used when you chikazuku. approach something. So over here was teburu no tarai ni chikazuku, which is I approach the wash basin on the table. 
I get close. Hi. Do you remember this guy? We just saw this one. Hmm. What was this? Um. It's not breakfast. It's, it's kazari. I know. It looks like there's tabimono in here, so you'd think it'd be food. Uh, do you know what kazari meant? Kazari. Mm -mm. That's decorations. Decorations. Kazari. Any kind of like Kaz extra finicky bits to something. So you you'll also will like describe clothes as having kazari. So it doesn't need to be like Christmas decorations. <laughs> Just so you know any kind of like extra thing you're adding to something. So rather than like a plain black coat, you have some extra stuff on it. Then you'd use kazari for that. It just means like to be decorated, basically. Hi. Um, can you read this sentence up on the top for me? Ah, uh, kikai ni kazari ga tsuita. There's decoration on the machine. Exactly. So whenever when I was talking about how um, relative clauses don't need to like mark the subject, this is this is an example, right? The subject is kazari. There are decorations that are attached to the machine. Well, we can say kazari no tsuita kikai. The ni right here is the one that's being attached to. So this is decorations that are attached to the machine. Um, ga and no are relatively interchangeable for um, relative clauses. Just it's, it's mostly for readability. So over here, I felt like this was easier to read, but this could be ga and it'd be fine. Um, so I just wanted to show this example because I do something like that seems over here soon. So yeah, that's, that's how you can see. It doesn't have to be the subject. Anything, as long as it's a noun, can become the head of the relative clause. And everything else is going to be marked by some kind of particle. In this case, no, but it could be ga to let us know whatever is missing from the sentence. That's this guy's role. Because nothing else makes sense, right? The machine that is Hi. decorated with um, kazari. Um, so let's go read this line from the book. Sono doa ni chikazuri. Kasari? Uh, yes. Kasari. Kazari. Kazari no suita. Kagi ana o nozoki komu. And we say that nozoki komu was to gaze into, to yes. take a peek. So that door, at that door, I approach the door and Kazari no suita kagi ana o. Um, I I peer I peer into the keyhole that was decorated. Exactly. So some kind of fancy keyhole we got here. Next word. Can you read it for me? Do naru. Hi. So do naru is an angry voice, basically a yelling angry voice. This right here is angry, and this guy is to cry. So an angry cry. Do naru. This is do naru. a verb. What I... is the te form of do naru? Do natte. Hmm. Do natte. Do natte. Yeah, gotta, gotta make sure that glad I'll stop in there. So let's go read the line from the book. Do no tsugu. Muko niwa Otoko ga hitori tate ite Nanika donate da. Mm. Dono sugu ko niwa. Sugu. You know what sugu means? Sugu. Soon, right? right it can away. mean soon. And here, sugu is modifying muko. So in this case, right, right on the muko. Right in that direction. Yeah. Right at the direction. In this case, of muko door. is the opposite side. So do no muko, the opposite side of the door. Well, cons on one side, the opposite side of the door is the other side of the door that con is not standing at. So right on the opposite side of the door, on the other side of the door, what happened? Otoko ga hitori tatte ite. 
there's a man that's standing. And Narika Donate, we say Dona was Donaru was to scream, right? Yep. In a mad way. In a mad way. It was a mad scream. Mm -hmm. There was some sort of a mad scream. So, so. Ita. Yep. So on the other side of the door, there's one man standing there yelling something. Um, and I drew a picture Hi. illustrating that. Khan's like, wow, what are they yelling about? Um, do you know what this kanji is? Oops. Four. The kanji is shiro, white. Yep, shiro, white. Perfect. Can you read this for me? Uh, mashiro. Perfect, completely really white. white. Um, can you read this for me? Kami. Kami ga machiro no machitsuda, machitsushida. Perfect. The magician that is whose hair was completely white. Perfect. Yep. Now we're doing kanji check. Do you remember how this guy's read? It is yo yokute. Yokote. Yokote. How about this guy? Hanasu. Perfect. And this one? Chikazuki. Chikazuki. Uh, what does chikazuki mean actually? I should double check that. Struggle with it. Because it's to approach. Perfect. And do you know how this guy's read when it's all by itself? Kin. Or kane. Kane. So kin and gane are how it tends to be pronounced when it's married. So kane. So kane is um, money. Hi. Kane. Uh, in this case, it actually is kin, I think, for gold. Hi. <laughs> which, which one is it? Uh, can, can you read this for me? Kuroi robu ni kinga ita or kinga suita. The robe, the black robe, um, there is gold attached to the black robe. Perfect. And perhaps gold stitching or something. So yeah, so keen. How could you rearrange this into a relative clause? Kinga ita kuroi robu. Yep, perfect. And if you wanted to, you could also say um kuroi uh, robu um, ni suita kin. Both of these are beautiful relative clauses, and I love that you did the one I wanted you to make first, but I just thought pointing out both are possible. The yellow that was attached to the black robe. Uh yes, the gold that was attached to the to the black robe. Uh, keen iro, so you'd add iro to this to mean gold color. So that would be yellow. But keen on its own is literal gold, like the money. Mm -hmm. Um this right here is kusari kusari. And this is chain. So a chains. So, like what an emo boy would wear on his pants, guys, like nice little chain pants. Or any kind of chains, really. How's this read? Kusari. Perfect. Kusari. It's like I'm swearing when I say it. Um, can you read this for me? Chin no ah. kusari no suita kuroi robu. The robe that was at, uh, attached with. was attached with. Um, change the golden change chains oh so you know like a chain do, 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 do. so he got he got fancy little rope right golden change in the rope yeah but you're like a really emo <laughs> emo boy rope but with gold rather than silver <laughs> <laughs> gold change <laughs> he, he looks like one of those like a uh, a gangsta like gangster rappers got his gold chains on <laughs> back rope <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they usually have it on their pants usually <laughs> in this case it's a robe <laughs> um can you read this for me um bura sageru yep bura sageru so this is to dangle so something is dangling dangling down on something so dangling. let's go read the line from the book probably our last line of the Hi. day kino uh, let me see. This is um. Starts with the ka. 
Hasari? Yep. Kazari. And I'm sorry, lost my mind here. Kazari was um a decorated with. A decoration, yes. Kino Gazari ga tsuita. Kuroi robu o motoi. Matoi. Kino. Um, kino. Kino. Kusari. Kutsari de. Kubi kara ma doseki o. Burasagete iru. Um, so the go decorated Kas Kazari Gasuita Kuroe. You know what this mato is? That's matoe mato. Matoe. Is that an adjective? Matoi. It's actually a verb. It's mato that turned into matoi because it's matoi mas. So we got a little and right there. Uh, mato is to put on clothing, specifically a robe, like item. Put so, on. in other words, the magician is wearing a robe. What kind of robe is he wearing? He is wearing a black robe that was attached with gold decorations. Yep. Nice. Very fancy. And what else is he wearing? He have a kino kusari de kubi kara. From his neck, mm -hmm. there is a golden chain. Oh. Chain. Madoseki. Chains, right? More than yeah. chains. Um, Madoseki o burasage de the Mag the magical stone was hanging. Yeah, how was it hanging? From his neck. Yes. How well, else? Kubikara, Is it just hovering? With use, using the golden change. Exactly. Oh, Perfect. By using yep. the golden change, was hanging from his neck. Yep. So somehow he has his magical stone attached to a chain. Chain. <laughs> Oh, it was weird. funny you just drew you just drew the dragon ball the fourth star <laughs> dragon ball yeah. that, that's what the magical stones look like Got you make wishes a, on it after a, all it's a dragon ball that we're searching for at the whole time <laughs> okay Hi. so that is where we'll be dropping off for the day um any questions before we go 